or I fail to record now. All right then, um, let me quickly share on my screen this book. Uh, I hope everybody can see it. All right. Um, maybe before we we continue, Vestan, could you kindly pray for us, please? We can just pray audibly. Okay, let us pray. Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, that you mm. have brought us together, Lord. Mm. Father, as we dive into your word this evening, Lord, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus that it may take root in our heart mm. and it may have an mm. impact in our lives. In the mm. mighty name of Jesus, Lord, may you guide the person sharing tonight, Father. Mm. Let us keep on every single word, Lord, that comes from you and let us learn from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Um, great. Um, wow. So the topic today um, from this book I'm sharing, it's called, the title of the book, it's Commanding Your Morning. It's written by one of the great women of God. Uh, I just seem to have forgotten her name, but um, I will tell you the name on, on the WhatsApp chat later. So does God know you? Does God know? That's a very big question. Does God know you? Wow, it, it hits very deep for me because, you know, as a child of God, you believe that God knows you. And it, it's impossible for a parent to not know their child. It's, it's unthoughtful, something you cannot think about. You know, like I know my own daughter and my son, you know, it's impossible for a parent not to know their own child. But is it possible for a, a parent not to know their own child? I don't know, I don't know. It's just a big question here on the title, but as we dive deeper, we're gonna hear what the woman God say about this. Does God know you? So in Matthew 7, verse 22 to 23, I read, many would say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demon in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I would declare to them, this is Jesus speaking. I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Wow. I'm going to repeat this verse again. Maybe others who have other versions can also uh, read for us later on. Many will say to me in that day, this is Jesus speaking, Lord, Lord, have you not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I would declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. All right. Let's let it sink. Let's meditate on it. Uh, I know David, every time he says his psalms, he says, Sela. You know, let's just meditate on it for a moment. Before I dive deep to the conversation we're going to have with the great woman of God tonight, uh, maybe let's pray again. I just feel like praying. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, Father, that tonight we, we're going to hear your word. That God, you are give us a title or a topic that's challenging us to understand your perspective, the way you view us as your children. Father God, we all yearn and long to know you. We all yearn and and yearn to be known by you, O oh God. So tonight we pray in the mighty name of Jesus that empower all of us, God, and revive us in this month of September as we journey in your scripture. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. All right. I read. 
I never knew you. Can you imagine what it will be like to hear those words when you finally get to meet Jesus face to face? Just imagine that. To hear those words straight from the Lord. But this is the encounter, this is the outcome we risk if we try to do the will of God without seeking the face of God. Okay, this is very, very, I'm going to repeat that sentence again. But this is the outcome we risk if we try to do the will of God without seeking the face of God. All right. If we settle into the comfortable patterns of doing the work of the Lord without going, without getting our daily instruction from the Lord of the work. All right. Okay, this is very mind blowing. This is to each, this is to inch our way off the path of God. Sorry, this is to inch our way off the path God has set before us without ever realizing it. It is to despise the greatness of what God wants to do through us for the compromise of living well enough as we are, for settling into a life without growth. Okay. For me, that's how I feel right now as I'm hearing the word of God that we as believers, we tend to compromise a lot and compromise with the things that will cause us to find ourselves in lawlessness. And the reality is the Holy Ghost in us is there to show us that now it's like the Holy Ghost is like what? To protect us from overheating. It's like in an engine of a car, there's something called a thermostat. So a thermostat is to make sure and, re and regulate the, the, the whole system of the car so that you know the car is overheating or not. So the Holy Spirit is in you. At times you do feel that mm, I, I, it seems like I'm no longer doing the right things. You know, I, I've gone off the rail here. You know, as much as you can justify it, but you know for a fact that you're no longer walking with Christ the way Christ wants you to walk, you know, as a believer. Not that you're not born again, but you know as a believer that it's not the path God wants me to do. You know, I, I think I, I shudder this person. I shouldn't have shuddered this person. Or I, I hated this person. I shouldn't have hated that. I should have forgiven this person. Or, you know, I've spoken ill to this person. I shouldn't have done that. You know, I, I've skipped doing this, I've skipped tying, I've skipped a lot of things that we as believers are as sometimes we go off trade on it. We, that is part of lawlessness. <laughs> so I'm just gonna open the room. I'm not gonna go deeper into it because it's also preaching to me tonight as I'm preaching to you as well about it, that imagine we all get to heaven and then we ask this question, no, no, we get to heaven and God says, I never knew you. And you try to explain why you deserve to be in heaven. But God says, I never knew you. you know? So the big question is, do you know, does God know you? <laughs> does God know you? That's the biggest question tonight. Who wants to start? Does God know you? Please make it personal. <laughs> don't uh, don't generalize it. Don't generalize it. Don't generalize it. Don't generalize it. Yeah. And try and, and keep it short to ever is Hey colleagues. All right, there you hey, go. Hey colleagues. All right, there you go. Yes. Hi everybody. Hi. We all know the answer Hi. to that. God <laughs> knows me for sure. I'm 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 he who God la I'm I'm what can what does John say? I'm the disciple whom Jesus loves. And it is such affirmations, colleagues, and indeed. It is such belief and faith in the love that we have that we are experiencing in Christ, which makes us to be able to 
know that definitely the way to heaven is, 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 is for me. But when this verse is being preached today, it sort of feels like when we are in heaven and God is now about to issue out mentions each to their, according to their works, according to how they have practiced. And, and, and those who thought were doing what was the work of God are being surprised by the, the, the notion of, I never knew you, you know, they are now in heaven, but they getting a shake and not a mention. Mama. That's, that's, that's the feeling I get that um, Peter was asking actually about. And Peter was very proud, I, I guess, as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a person to have the guts to ask Jesus himself, Lord, we've done everything for you. What is in, what is in it for us? You know, these questions already is, is asked from a position of knowing that you are in heaven, knowing that Naganjani, I'm with you. I just want to know then what, you know? And I feel like let us continue in this journey. Let us continue more than before, meeting as saints, gathering as saints, um, sharing the word of God, teaching each other, and never ask yourself if you're going to heaven, but ask yourself if God knows you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Chava. Thank, thank you so much, Chava. The question remains, I said, make it personal. Does God know you? He did say yes. All right. My wife says it, it, it did say yes, but did say yes. It's, it's to me, it's to me how I, I see this verse, more of the heaven part taken care of. Now, what am I getting God? You know, what is my reward when we are in heaven? Jesus says, many mentions, I'm going to prepare a place for you. My stake in heaven is there. Now I want, to express to God that, you know, through practicing the faith, not, nothing pleases God more than the faith. And practicing that uh, by, by showing each other love, I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging us today that con in continuing to do so, reaffirming the faith that is unseen, the things that are unseen in, in the world that only believes in the seen, um, portraying God or praising God from a point of victory, um, being confident about what is it that God has promised us, guys? That is um, what releases all these miracles, praying for those that need to be prayed for and meeting together as saints and teaching each other, encouraging one another to continue in doing good. And, and obviously being the light where people see dark, that those are signs that God knows you because <clears throat> you're not asking from yourself things that God never gave you, but you're actually showing things from inward inwardly the things that God has given to you and you are giving them back freely to the world because you you have also received this love you know you, you know what it is to be loved by God and you're giving it so God knows us God knows us God knows me all right so uh, I'm gonna take that answer as uh, the, uh, your answer um, I'm gonna move to the next speaker Madzi. Uh, does God know you, Matsi? Um, hi, everyone. Hi, hi. <laughs> and thanks for welcoming me for the second time. The last time I said I'll come back and just disappear into a thin blue air. <laughs> hi, hi, Matsi. Yes, now I'm back. <laughs> so uh, the question says, does God know you? And it also says, take it personal, okay? So I'm gonna like uh, nibble here and there in my personal experience. So I would say it's a definite yes, cause if the word says, I knew you while you still blood, while you were still blood, it means for me, I knew the steps you will take forth, the decision you're gonna make long before your parents even knew that you are a girl or a boy or your character or how you're gonna materialize into the woman you are, you know? And even in the cross, while Jesus was on the cross, he says, I see everything, you know, that is coming, but no, Ukuti, through the cross, I've already um, 
overcome them for you. So with you, it should also be easy. It's, it's like, for me, it's like a second confirmation of saying, I know you, uh, dark or blue, or even if, even if you go through the dead, I will know you. There's nothing about you that will puzzle me because I knew you while you were still blood. I mean, how, how can you tell of a person while it's still just red cells, you know, uh, a bunch of cells? For me, it really speaks volumes. And a recent encounter was when I found myself in a murky situation with a couple of friends, okay? And I just found myself in a position where I was just praying and then something just say, just step outside and listen what's happening. And when I got outside, uh, my friends were arguing with one of the law personnel in terms of them trying to arrest us, okay? So I did not say much until that point where I was given a platform to talk and having spoken in a way that that law personnel allowed us to continue with our journey and not have arrested us, it made me feel that clearly God came through for us because everyone was talking, but that police personnel could not hear them. But when I spoke and I spoke right after I prayed, God came through in that situation. I mean, I could have messed it up. I could have went, went out and messed up the situation even further, but it, I did not. And I'm not saying that I said anything that is uh, unique or outlying or whatsoever, but I just spoke simple things that a mere human being can connect to, you know? And I say by that, by that, um, uh, mere experience and, 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 and the way in which God came through and showed me what I still hear when you talk to me and I still want to advocate for you and I still want to be God in your life. Call me, I will always be present for you. It means for me that God knows me. So thank you. Amen. Amen. Wow, wow, wow. Very, very impressive. Um, you know, they, the, the Bible talks about that we, we shall conquer by the word of our testimony. Mm -hmm. So that is very important that we testify to each other whenever we meet. And you never know how much uh, mm -hmm. grace God gives when someone testifies. You know, some of us cannot necessarily go to a text rank and preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. But when you testify to me and I testify to you, that word is, you are like preaching the word of God. You are telling us what God has been doing in your life, while the other person maybe is waiting for God to do something in their lives. So it is important. It's not pride. It's not showing off when you testify uh, to one another. It is what God expects of us to do, to tell each other of great stories of what God has done for them. You know, um, I, I, I shared last month that uh, uh, the, the great women uh, of God were the first to, to see Jesus being, when he woke from the, from the grave. They, it was Mary Magdalene and the other women who saw him first. And they witnessed such great testimony. And they took that testimony, the experience, you know, which others are not feeling. And they went and testified and said, he's awake. He has risen from the dead. And he's going to meet. You know, that message, it encouraged, it encouraged a lot of people. And they went, Alan, the other person, I think it was Peter who ran to go and check at the grave. And he still met Jesus as well. So I'm just saying, at times, some people are waiting for their miracles. Some people are waiting for their revival. Some people are waiting for encouragement. Sometimes the encouragement is with you. You know, it's with you, Mansi. It's with you, uh, Oneka. You know, it's it's. You just need to start sharing, and when you share, someone else will get a spark and will be encouraged as well. All right, I'm gonna move to you, Oneka. Does God know you? No, no, I get to I have no idea. I got those. I don't know. I I don't know. Um, Tell us what you. My, my reason for saying I don't know it's because 
I think it was three weeks or four weeks ago when I mentioned that I've, I'm in a stage whereby I'm just asking myself, like, at what point are you going to know that this is from the Lord and this is just in your head? You're just using your judgment based on patterns that you've seen before. So hence I'm saying I'm in a stage where I don't know if I met God today, whether he'd be like, yeah, I know you. He'd be like, hey, I can save you on this. You're gray. You're not black. You're not white. You're just gray. So not to answer your question, I'll just say, I don't know. I don't have an answer for your question. All right. That's, that's fair enough. Uh, that's what Bible studies are all about. To, to talk about these things and discuss them, you know, and maybe one can also find their own conviction to realize, wow, God has been there all along, you know, and, and uh, yeah, I'm going to be the last one to answer here. So I'm going to move to someone that thought I forgot them because the husband spoke. So, <laughs> Palisa, <laughs> I didn't forget. <laughs> How far are we at one month? <laughs> I love this one. I know that. I know that. <laughs> oh, guys. Um, you know what? We, I, I, I first thought I man the the heading does God know me and in the scripture mm -mm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I'm like, ah, you know what? Mina God knows me, shame because each and every day we are about, hey, there's that child that's always asking, oh, that's always praying, oh, Jehovah, I'm lost, oh, help me, what do I do next? That's always knocking, you know. Um, like the, today we were having a discussion with my friend and we were talking about giving and typing, and I was saying, hey, when I didn't dribble, I didn't dribble. So, I'm like, you know what? Ndimu knows or I we're thinking I Nanji. I just must spend time with her because she needs me clearly every day of her life, you know. She's always coming, she's always asking, she's always hopeful, you know. So for me personally, I think God knows me in that way. And um and and I feel like there are things where um, every time I feel the most vulnerable, I feel like it's the time where I'm connecting with him because then I'm letting go of all, what do you call them, strongholds or letting go of all self-mindfulness, you know. So in that term, yes, I think he knows me because I'm always at his, you know, I'm always bothering him. I can move break. All right. Awesome. Uh, awesome, Palisa. Hello. Hello, Daniel. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, thanks. Great. Yeah, greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus. Um, yeah, he knows me as my name is written in the book of life. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Wow. That, that was very strong. I was expecting more from uh from you, but anyway. <laughs> I get it. You said we should answer the question. So All right. person, great, so. great. I, I'm enjoying how you answered the question. You did good. Um versatile. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm taking a moment to just suck it in, you know, and then just, um, but to answer your question, I'd say, yes, God knows me. And again, to just stretch it a bit further, because there are actually, I feel, two ways to look at this question. Number one would be like, how do you know that God knows you? Apart from him telling you that I know you. You know, as as um, uh, Machia put it, you know, when as you were speaking, Machia, I was like, okay, you know, that that just uh, answers the question that Onika asked. Um, that you know, I don't know, but if he himself says to you that I have known you, you know, before 
you even knew yourself. So definitely that for all of us is more like a blanket. But now when, when asked personally, how do you know that he knows? Apart from just reading that scripture that he says that he knows, you know, and, and also not, not to look at just, saying that he is around, he is here, he's been there like in your path throughout. Cause that is for me, it's some of the things that just gives affirmation to say, you know what, God is here, but does he know me? Now that comes back to my spiritual life, you know, uh, just the way Palesa puts it now, you're the, that child that keeps on knocking, like, hey God, I need help. Or whatever good thing that happens, you know, it has to be God. You know, because he's like in the beginning, the end, everywhere he's there. And without him, you can't do anything. So it has to do with his presence also. And just acknowledging that, you know, throughout your life, he is there. So and also when you pray for him to answer, for me, that is confirmation to say that he knows me. Otherwise, why would he answer if he didn't know me? You see, so I say this not to bring it home and personalize it to say, when I pray, you know, I, I also uh, hear from him as well, especially when, when I'm meditating on his word, I hear him loud and clear. You know, sometimes I can't exactly explain the how and all of that, but like it's that kind of feeling when you know in your heart of hearts. And sometimes it's more like deja vu, I feel, because you would have visions of things. You would see things that you're praying for in a certain way. And sometimes it comforts you not to panic uh, while there's chaos all around you, because I'll be praying for something and then the world is saying otherwise, but I know what God told me. I know what he said while I was praying and it keeps me calm. And when I see what I prayed for actually coming through, you know, for me, it's it just affirmation to say, you know what? He had me, he knows me because he answered me. So yeah, a, a lot of things um, I, I can just use to as an example of how God has come through and how uh, I can attest to say that he knows me. So to cut it short, um, love, I'm not sure if you're connected on your side, but I'm, I'm just gonna stop there. Great, 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 my love. Um, I'm so happy that um, everybody shared their peace and um, wow, wow. So what I enjoy on this scripture the most was it, it challenges even the person who would say, I know that I am born again. I know that God loves me. It challenges us to go back to the basics because it's easy to lose direction or to get used to not listening to God. Because what I've noticed on the scripture there, uh, if you can also zoom on your phone, uh, where it says that, when Jesus said, I never knew you, these people were believers who some cast out demons. To cast a demon out, you need to be a believer and you need to be born again in the name of Jesus. Because the demon, they know who is a believer and who is not a believer. You understand? So these people were believers, <laughs> just like you and I. They did all the work, but the work they were doing, it was for them. Because it's easy to fall in the trap of doing things for yourself without being inspired by the Holy Ghost. Or doing things for others without being inspired by the Holy Ghost. Because the Bible, Jesus does say, I will leave you behind the Holy Spirit. It will teach you everything that I want you to do and everything that you ought to do on this earth. It doesn't matter what field you're in, you have the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter which era of your life you're in, you have the Holy Spirit. So it is impossible for a believer to be in a state of confusion. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna repeat myself on this one. It is impossible for a believer to be in a state of confusion. Because the Holy Spirit guides you. 
the Holy Spirit will guide you in each and every step that you are about to make. Whether in a field of science, just like my wife, virologist, whether in a field of, of auditing, just like Chaba and, and, and et cetera, whatever field you are in, the Holy Ghost is with you there and he knows that field better than you because he is God himself. So nothing is in this earth that God doesn't understand. He understands it better than us. He understands Zoom better than us. He understands each and every individual. <laughs> you know, he understands Onika a predicament right now. He understands every man. So the only thing you need to do, Onika, is to shut every device out and start speaking to this God in your own terms, in your own space. You know, I challenge you now to say, to speak to God and say, speak to me. If you want an audible voice, do it. If you want to see him face to face, do it. Because he is real. God is real. So I dare anyone tonight to believe and trust God and ask God. If you are afraid to meet him face to face, ask him to come in your dream. And then next week, I need to testify about it. <laughs> if you are so confused about the verse, I wanted to do you yourself a favor. Or maybe you are so lazy to read the word. Ask God to help you understand the word and to force you to read. If you are too stubborn to read like myself sometimes, I'm too stubborn to wake up and pray. Ask God to wake you up. And I'm telling you, I dare you. He will wake you up and you're going to pray whether you like it or not because you've given him power the will it you have a free will remember so when you give god power he will operate in your life so the only thing that's missing right now in our lives we have everything we need we only need to need to do is to ask god to help us do things that we ought to do and then everything will go smoothly so whatever thing that you want to do whatever thing that you desire to achieve in this world, whatever thing that you want to know, for you to really understand, I dare you to dare God and say, God, would you show up? You know, I've got so many testimonies I hear from people around me, from my wife, you know, my own personal testimonies, what God has done when I dare him and say, God, you know, I can't make a decision on this one. Please make a decision for me. And God makes a decision and it's always the best decision that God will make for you in whatever you want to do. So I just want to challenge you tonight, everybody, and say, remember that our God is, is alive. He is a living God. He's not an idol. You don't need to coach him. You don't need me to coach you. You know, he is omnipresent. In other words, he's everywhere. Right now, he's each and every room. I'm upstairs. My wife is downstairs. And it's Chava's house. He's everywhere in Onika's place. Everywhere, God is there. He's already tomorrow. Because God is everywhere at all times. He is. He, he, no one can understand God. He will, you'll fail to understand who God is. If you think God, he will fail to be God. If you can, under, you can be able to describe who God is. He is God. He's omnipresent. He's omnipotent. He's omniscient. He is beyond understanding. He cannot be broken down to small molecules to be understood by matter or anything else. He is God. So I just want to say that to you, that we have a God. And we have a reference of this God. He is the God of Israel because he chose Israel as his has his people in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, he is our God because of Jesus, who is God, who died for us and rose for us so that we can no longer be born of sin, but we are now born of his blood, Jesus. So he is a God. He is our God. So I just wanted to emphasize on that one, brother, tonight as I close. Shall we all pray, open our mouth and just pray? Audibly, everybody pray god can hear us at the same time remember <laughs> he's not like us so if you are offended it means we are praying to you not to god so don't get offended we are talking to god at the same time <laughs> praise god my god thank you jesus
that you are the same God who did something that was beyond science and understanding. You rose from the dead and you went up to heaven. Father God, we still don't understand where heaven is. Scientists, astrologists, or whatever they can be, astronomy, they try to figure out how far they can get. But Lord, you have been beyond because you created the whole universe. You knew there were heavens before we even discovered there were heavens. Father God, we thank you that you are still a strength. God who understands us, who knows us better. Father God, everything that you structured on this earth, the earth is still spinning the way you created it because you are still the same God who created the east and the south and the west. There is nothing that yours, God, that is failing because God, you are a good God. You are a God who continues to spread out the seed. The water still gushes all over the world. As much as we hear about global, but we know that you are a God who controls everything. Even global warming cannot destroy what you have destined in this world. Father, we thank you that God, you created good things, you created vaccines whenever that is, because you are the same God. You are the same good God. Jesus, you took out mud and helped people for the God, for the God who couldn't see because you used proper seed science. Father God, we thank you for great things that you are still going to do in our life. Father God, we are not surprised we know that you are alive for a reason. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you will continue to amaze us. We know, God, if we ask you to help us, you will truly help us. Help us to know who you are. And as much as it might be a scary thing for us as human mere beings, as mere beings, Father God, to understand who we are, but help us, Father God, to understand to the limit that you want us to know who we are, who you are. Help us to understand and to know that you know us. Give us confirmations on daily basis. May we have testimonies within this week. By the time we meet next week, we'll be talking about great things that we see you, God. We have seen you, God, in our lives. We thank you, Father, for the great gifts we have, things we don't deserve. We thank you for the things that we think we deserve. We thank you, Father God, for our country, South Africa. We thank you for peace. We thank you, God, that you are intervening, Father God, in politics of this country. You are intervening in the economy of this country. We thank you for the good GDP, God, which we just had that came out recently, God, this week. We thank you, Father God, for that, God, you are doing a new thing, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that, Father God, all these things shall come together. We thank you for the upcoming elections. We thank you for everything you are doing.